In today's video, we'll take a look at the switch statement in C. Um, you can think of the switch statement as sort of an extended if, right? Whereas, for example, with an if, you have uh, if some statement here, you would execute some code, right? And then in the else part of it, you're gonna execute some code based on if this condition is false. If this condition is true, this code will be executed. And if this condition is false, this code will be executed. So very self-explanatory, but what happens if instead of true and false, what you want to determine is a certain value. So let's take, for example, uh, let's try to implement a simple example here. What I want to do is to have a variable, an integer called fruit. So I'm going to say int fruit. And I'm going to instantiate it with uh, the value negative one, just because that's sort of the default for now. And I want to read into this variable a value from the user. So I'm going to say here, uh, let's say print f. What is your favorite fruit? All right. And then backslash n simple enough. And then what I'm going to do is say scanf underscore s because that's what I usually use. You can use just the normal flavor of scanf in this example. Uh, percent %d, that's what I'm reading. And then I want to read that inside the fruit variable. Okay, so that's simple enough. If I execute this, I can just say something like 12 because it's a number, remember? And then, okay. But based on this number, based on this fruit here that's being read from the uh, user, what I want is to actually have uh, a text saying that, oh, your favorite, your favorite fruit is orange or your favorite fruit is apples or whatnot. Right, so I can say here, um, sure enough, I can say if fruit is, let's say zero, then I'm just going to print on the screen, you selected, uh, let's say apples. Right? like that. And then what, can, what I can do is say if fruit is one, I can basically copy and paste this and just say you selected uh, lemons. And if fruit is two, I can print off this same thing. So I think I have this in the clipboard and I can say, I don't know, let's say oranges. Right, so based on the value of this fruit, we're going to print different statements. We're going to execute different parts of the code. So if I run this, well, I can just say one. Then it's going to say you selected lemons. Nice. So that 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 works. But the switch statement, what it does, it makes this uh, code a little bit easier to read. Like right uh, when you see this, it's okay, it's fine, but it's just if. Uh, it repeats the fruit word every single time and uh, you have to realize that this is actually all just a um, a condition for the same variable. So what you can do is use a switch statement instead. You can say here switch. I want to switch the what what variable, what value do you want to switch? I want to switch the value of fruit, right? And inside it, instead of having if statements, you have case. So case and then space and after space you, you tell it well i want in case the fruit is zero and then a colon here afterwards i want to execute the code from here i want to execute this code right this is what we want and then uh, this is very important for the most part uh, you will have to have a break statement right in here okay and that's the that's sort of the the structure of a case inside the switch, right? So if the fruit is zero, it's going to execute this code. Same thing for case one. Case one, if the fruit is uh, one, I'm going to execute you selected lemons. I'm going to print that on the screen. And again, break is important. Case two, print f oranges, uh, copy and paste, break here. And then we can simply comment this out. All right, and now if I try to run this, you'll notice that if I type in, let's say two, I'm gonna say use, it's gonna say you selected oranges. So that works, right? It said, all right, this is two. So I'm gonna take a look at the case two and I'm gonna print you selected oranges. Fair enough. Now, what happens if, for example, we don't have a case for the value that we're trying to uh, execute for? So for example, if I type in here, 
something like uh, 33. That's a number that we don't have. If I hit enter, nothing's gonna happen because there's no case for it. Nothing, absolutely nothing is gonna happen. But how can we sort of say that, okay, if you don't have a value in the cases, please execute this sort of default code. Well, there is actually, instead of saying case and then some value, you can say default and then again, colon. And default says, okay, if you didn't actually uh, find a case for our fruit here, you can execute the default case here. I'm gonna say printf no such fruit or something like that. Uh, there we go. And then again, a break, but that break maybe not needed. Anyway, if I say here now 33, it's gonna say no such fruit, right? And not only 33, any number you type in, 130 is gonna say the same thing if it's not zero, one or two. Now in a future video, I'll take a look at uh, more details about the syntax of this switch statement. But now I just want to show you the parallels to this switch statement because you're not really, mm, it's not necessarily needed to use the switch statement. If you, want, if you want to, you could use the, just an if else chain of conditions. So here we can say, here's the, the if uh, statements that we've started with, but it's not quite right. Why? Because the switch, what it does is, for example, it goes one by one. So uh, if I type in one, if fruit is one, for example, it's gonna say, okay, is fruit zero? No. Is fruit one? Yes. And then stop here. It's not gonna check if fruit is two, all right? So it's just gonna stop here and execute a code, and that's it. With this uh, chain of ifs, it's just gonna go, is fruit zero? No. Is fruit one? Yes, then execute the code. Then it's gonna ask, is fruit two? No. And it's gonna go along the chain and uh, check, even, even though it already found a case for it, which was one, it's gonna keep on checking. So what you can do to uh, sort of improve the efficiency of this code, you can say, on, you can say else after each if. So what it's gonna do is, um, let's say fruit is one, it's gonna say, is fruit zero? No. Okay, so I'm gonna go through the else branch. The else branch is this whole code for it, right? I don't have any uh, brackets here, but uh, implicitly, if you don't have any brackets, it's just the next statement. Then it's gonna ask, is fruit one? Well, yes, then execute this code here. Okay, and I'm not gonna execute this code here, so I'm gonna check if fruit is two because it's in the else. Uh, statement of this if, right? To better illustrate what I'm talking, right? what, what the code really means here is if I actually add the tabs properly, right? So it's something like this, okay? So uh, this is true, right? This condition is true. So you just execute the code here. It didn't execute the code here, okay? So this is why, this is how the if else chain works. It just kind of stops after it finds a case. So now it's, the, almost the same uh, efficiency as the switch statement. And of course, to add a default, all we have to do is just say um, else, right? And add something after the last else here. So I'm gonna say print f no such fruit and then break. Or we don't even need a break actually because it's, in, it's an if else. So this is actually going to be equivalent to this code here, right? They're gonna function the same way with more or less the same efficiency. And to make this look better, because if you had, for example, five uh, five conditions here, it wouldn't look better because you would have like many tabs, as you can see, it just kind of goes uh, onto the right a lot. So what you can do is just have it as we had it before, like this. So this is just a way to format things. It's not gonna change the code actually. It just looks better that way. All right, so now if we do this, well, it's not gonna go to the right, it's just all indented at the same level. And you can even, if you don't like this space here, you can even do this, which I like to do. And it's pretty obvious that this is sort of a switch statement made of else and ifs, whereas this is an actual switch statement. So you can use whichever you want, but the main difference between the two is that in the switch statement, you only have to use the fruit uh, variable that we're checking once. So if this fruit variable is quite long, you might want to actually use a switch statement instead of an if else. For me, it was just one word, so that's that's fine. But if it's an actual 
long uh, sort of operation, then uh, you might want to use a switch statement instead. All right, and this is it for the introduction of a switch statement. I hope now you understand what is it and how you can sort of use it. It's basically, as I said, an extension of the if statement, right? As an if has only two cases, if and else, but a switch has as many cases as you want, as many cases as there are values for that variable, basically, if you want that many. So in a future video, I'm gonna take a look at the syntax. So that should be probably tomorrow. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you got something out of it and until next time, take care, bye.